Welcome back to Hot News, everybody. Some of you didn't like my intro from yesterday because it said hot news too many hot times. I'm so sorry I offended your hot news sensibility, but we're here with hot news today. And I just want to remind you that we are brought to you by UFD Deals, which is a deals website where we'll bring you hot deals from around the internet, making sure you guys can save a couple bucks, which as it relates to the key part of our stories today, you probably need to uh, save a little bit of money for the upcoming months. So check out the link for UFD Deals in the video description, help support us at the channel. We get a small kickback for everything you buy if you click on the links there and it just keeps hot news going and everybody wants new hot news. And I would also like to take this moment to remind you that we do indeed include timestamps in the description as well as the first pinned comment of the video so that you can skip ahead to whatever story you care about at your convenience and your leisure so that we are not holding you captive to watching what we want you to watch, but rather what you want to watch. This ain't cable TV, this is YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. Now let's move on into the first story. So let's start off hot news today with a company that I thought went bankrupt, but apparently it's still producing products, Mad Cats. I'm sure you all know of them who produced the weird looking rat mouse that just looks like a rat and is super customizable. They're bringing out a brand new lineup of rat mice, including the OnePlus, 2 Plus, 4 Plus, 6 Plus, 8 Plus, Pro S3, and Pro X3, which should help meet your need for freakish mice, in case you know you're not a left-handed freak, like we talked about in the other story about Razer releasing left-handed mice. They'll also have earbuds and other weird things that, I mean, guess peripheral companies do nowadays. Did you own a rat mice, mouse, micees? Mises, did you own a rat mouse back in the day? I'm keen to hear. I, I like, I get the appeal of them, but they look so horrific. I could never bring myself to actually own one. Speaking of other things that I thought didn't exist anymore, RuneScape Classic was apparently still going on until Monday, in which case they actually had to shut down the server. But there was a Twitch streamer known by Titus Furious who was completing one last quest called the Legends Quest, which is apparently one of the toughest challenges that the game has. Over a thousand people were watching the last quest go on, including some of the Jagex employees who own RuneScape. They made sure that the server stayed online until Titus Furious could complete the quest in the last quest that ever happened on RuneScape Classic. Apparently this like RuneScape changed into RuneScape 2 back in like 2004 and has been continuing. And the, like RuneScape Classic is what I remember playing as a child. I, I put a few hours in there, realized that I get way too addicted to MMOs and probably should not continue this or try World of Warcraft because I will just sink my hours away. And now look at me, we have 130,000 subscribers on YouTube because I chose not to play MMOs, kids. Don't do it. Uh, now let's talk about a company that exists now, but probably will not down the line like we thought of these other companies. The Magic Leap One Mixed Reality Headset is now available for roughly $2,300. This is just not gonna work. Nobody's, people will buy this. They'll buy it as a gimmick. Mixed Reality is not gonna go anywhere if this is what it's gonna cost. They, they kickstarted stuff. This company is gonna fold. It's not gonna exist. I don't see Magic Leap existing very much in the future if this is their business model. That's my personal opinion. I'm not hyped on MR or VR until prices come down substantially and quality goes up in, in substantially as well. We're basically in that balance of like, it's too expensive for normal consumers, yet it needs normal consumer adoption in order to become viable. So it's the chicken and the egg basically. Like you need good games in order to make this work. Games aren't coming because nobody's actually playing it. I get flack every time I talk about VR and MR. I'm excited for the future potential of this technology and I do absolutely see its use cases and how it could revolutionize things. I just don't think it's coming as imminently as people think it is, unless there's like some company that's gonna come out of left field and announce something that we've never seen before at a price that people can actually use. I don't know why, but we have a lot of news about things that like existed in nostalgia days and are now making a resurgence. But this one actually makes me so freaking excited. I don't know if I can convey this appropriately to you. It appears that the Palm PVG 100 smartphone will be coming out. My friends, my folks, I don't know if I've ever told you before, but my first smartphone was a Palm branded Pixie. And holy crap, I still have not had a consumer experience that matched the usability of WebOS on the Palm devices. Now, this probably won't work that way because Palm ended up licensing out WebOS to LG and now it's on TVs. And then the company that's making Palm is not HP anymore. It's going to be TLC, who like I've only known for making like super cheap TVs. So like, 
I'm not necessarily hyped on the announcement that like there will be a new Palm phone coming out. I'm just hyped from like the rose tinted glasses of my first smartphone experience. Remember how amazing the Pixie was, how much I wanted the Pre but couldn't afford it. And like, I'm just looking at the pictures of the Palm Pre 2 here on this article about the phone that might be coming out. And I, like, I'm just salivating over how amazing it's going to be. Apparently it's gonna launch with Android Oreo, but it officially is supposedly coming and it's not just a rumor or just an announcement anymore. They will be bringing it out soon. I'm excited for it. This isn't like Blackberry where like they had crappy technology and people just remember them fondly. Palm smartphones were amazing. That's the hill I'm gonna die on. Did any of you own a Palm smartphone? Not, not a Palm Pilot, not the Palm Trio, the Palm Pixie or the Palm Pre, any iterations of those, there's a poll right there. Let me know, did you own a Palm device? Because I want to be amongst my fellow brethren of Palm. Ah, okay, last little bit of obsolete news. Let's talk about this article from Gizmodo. Alex Jones is shirtlessly screaming into the void on popular social network, Google+. Plus. I only bring that up because of the hilarity of the title. Whether or not you agree with Alex Jones, don't agree with him, want him kicked off, don't want him kicked off. I just think the fact that his only last bastion of uh, safety is the Google Plus is a great hearkening back to like the terrible times where Google was actually trying to get that social media thing to work. They were bringing on all of the popular stars. I remember like even Blink-182 was like, yeah, we love Google Plus because of like the friendliness of it. And like you can chat to people like the real people. And now it's, it's Alex Jones. You know what, I lied. That wasn't our last little bit of obsolete news. We have some more about AMD because they're trying to sell their graphics cards by bundling in three different games, all of them which aren't even released yet. If you buy a participating ARX Vega 64, Vega 56, ARX 580, or ARX 570, you get three Vidya games, all of them, like I mentioned, yet to be released. These include Star Control Origins, Strange Brigade, and the one that's probably gonna be the one that everybody wants, which is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So this is applicable to all graphics cards sold between August 7th of this year and November 3rd of this year, or until stocks last. All I can think is this is AMD's only hope of actually selling graphics cards this season is to bring in a value add of Assassin's Creed because they're not gonna be releasing anything new. NVIDIA appears that they are going to be releasing things new, so how do you make people buy it? Well, you give them a $60 value bonus on buying an RX 580 when the GTX 1160 is gonna stomp their butt, but at least they're gonna be like, hey, I saved $60 by getting this free game. What, what do you think? Do you think that this is just like one of AMD's normal bundles, or do you think that this is them like gasping in the air trying to make sure that they have some sort of semblance of sales in the second half of this year because we all know it's not gonna be through mining. Like if you're paying 12 cents per kilowatt hour, you're very close to unprofitable at this point for mining Ethereum or anything relatively stable. What do you think? I'm, I'm curious. Let's have a conversation about it. Okay, we talked about a lot of obsolete things. Now let's talk about future tech and things that might be possibly coming out. It turns out that a researcher at Caltech has developed a way of using autonomous drones to help steer birds away from airports. This is in stark contrast to the current piloted drones that they have to help steer flocks of seagulls away from the airports or giant other birds that might end up into the engines and set things on fire. They try to keep them off of where planes might be intersecting. Now, researchers at Caltech have figured out a way that they can lower the cost of that happening by using autonomous drones that help kind of correct the course of these uh, migrants. Okay, we have some SSD news. It appears that Toshiba has announced a new type of memory called XL Flash, which they're intending to compete with Intel and Micron's cross-point technology, which this probably means that we're gonna have more competition in the ultra low latency, super fast random operations type of storage that is kind of useful as like a secondary DRAM almost, like really good for caching. Uh, hopefully that this will bring some price drops and good competition, just like the Intel and Micron split that we reported on a couple weeks ago. It should hopefully mean that these types of drives will come down in price to a point that eh, normal consumers will actually want to buy them. More SSD news. Marvel introduces the industry's first NVMe over fabric SSD controller. The NVMe over fabric uses the ethernet controller to potentially allow for up to two terabits per second of throughput. 
Whether or not that this is gonna come out to actual consumers, probably not anytime soon. This is gonna be for more data center operations where they need that kind of throughput. Uh, we typically just don't as consumers. So excited to see where this goes. This probably will trickle down at some point. Just like Samsung's four terabyte QLC SSDs that we reported on yesterday, those are now coming to consumers. But like Linus talked about those like a year and a half ago, even when there are only four enterprise grade solutions. Now let's go ahead and talk about this story from EA stating that they have come up with a moral compass after the Battlefront 2 issue that came about. So this comes from a recent interview with the Vice President of Strategic Growth, Mr. Matt Bilby, who says that the company is using a moral compass, which is designed to make sure that live services are kind of maintain their pillars of fairness, value, and fun, as he states whatever that freaking means. He stated, quote, we learned a lot from Star Wars Battlefront, which then he said to, it helps them redesign our game development framework and testing, testing platforms to ensure that similar mistakes are not made in the future. How, how do you have to create your moral compass? Like, I don't know if this is just like how I view things, but like typically morals don't come from an intentional strategic meeting of like corporate junkies who need more money in order to come up with a framework for how to not screw over the customer. Like, what does this even mean? I'm not even sure. Hopefully this means that they won't screw over consumers in the future. I'm not necessarily sure that's going to happen, but at least they're taking public steps to kind of show that it's being rectified to some extent. Whatever, I don't trust EA. Them having a moral compass now actually just makes things worse in my mind because like, why the frick didn't you have it before? This seems like an inbuilt part of humanity. Whatever. We reported on a couple days ago how the chip manufacturer TSMC was hit by a virus which might potentially slow down the releases of things like AMD Vega 7 nanometer, Zen 2, Nvidia 7 nanometer solutions, even the Apple iPhone upcoming new one that uses 7 nanometers for the A12 chip. Well, it turns out all of that is to blame because they were hit by the virus WannaCry. TSMC revealed that information, but was kind of like on the hush hush of how they actually had that virus enter their system. Well, it turns out they didn't update their Windows machines. Yeah, Windows has patched out WannaCry vulnerabilities a while ago, but it turns out that TSMC was like, nah fam, we don't want to do that. And now they're going to lose a lot of revenue because they didn't update their windows. Like my goodness, stay on the up and up, update your windows. Like just don't, don't do this. Don't be vulnerable to things that get patched out. This slightly ties into like the argument that people had a couple days ago, where we talked about machine learning, helping Microsoft figure out whether or not to shut down your computer for a windows update. People are just like, well, they should listen when we say no. Well, from their side, they don't want to be liable for you not updating your system and then also getting vulnerabilities because they implemented a security patch that you decided never to implement. It, I, it just allows for them to not be culpable in the case that you suck at, at making sure that your system is secure. And this TSMC giant issue kind of illustrates that, yeah, maybe you should consider installing those Windows updates when they're necessary. Okay, now let's get to the news that I have been dreading bringing to you all day, which is that PC prices are, are gonna go up. We talked a lot about how graphics card prices will go down 20%, RAM prices are gonna stabilize. Well, that would be true if there weren't any other m factors in the market that could potentially change that. And it turns out that the US-China trade war is gonna take its toll on PC parts. So on August 23rd of this year, there are gonna be new tariffs placed on specific types of electronics, which include electronic integrated circuits, processors and controllers, electronic integrated circuits, memories, electronic integrated circuits, amplifiers, electronic integrated circuits, others, and then parts of electronic integrated circuits and micro assemblies. And in case you didn't know, that's basically every single part of a computer. That's everything that you use is covered under there. And if it's not, it's under the other category. Now the tariff is 25%. So that basically means whatever you're paying now, add about 25% to that if it is indeed coming from China, which in case you didn't know, AMD and Nvidia and most of the major companies that we buy our stuff from have fabrication plants in China that will result in a price hike. Now there is a way that these companies can get around it by potentially 
was shipping from their fabs in China to Taiwan and then making the whole assembled product in Taiwan and then shipping that to the US. That will not incur the 25% tariff because Taiwan, even though it's technically China, isn't really China. And so that's a whole political rigmarole that I don't wanna go into, but things coming from Taiwan won't get taxed the same as they were from China, but it would be up to the companies to take that initiative. Whether or not they're going to do that remains to be seen. You probably would think that they would because it would mean that they get better sales, but it could also add some logistical costs that may increase their bottom line more than 25% like this tax would. We'll have to see how this actually like particularly develops, but at this point, Prices are going up, there's nothing we can do about it. All of the hopes and dreams and aspirations that we've had about prices going down, probably gonna be dashed. It's still possible that prices at the at normal margin level will go down, but at, that doesn't mean that things at the retailers will uh, expect them to go up. That's basically, I, I hate this news. I didn't wanna say it. Everything's going up. There's nothing we can do about it. It's nearly guaranteed. It sucks, sorry. And that's gonna wrap it up for all of the hot news we have today. Are you excited for prices going up? I mean, you're nervous and scared and we all, this is a very trying time. I'm not sure how we're gonna survive. I'm right there with you. Let me know how I can help you in the comments down below. I, I wanna be here, I wanna be your support. Don't forget to like that video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Check out UFD deals for some hot deals around the internet. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.